Welcome to the topic 1.5.1b Stack Frame Analysis Addressing Modes. In the previous session, we ended the discussion on how the system allocates memory for various segments. In this session, we will see how that very allocation brings about the concept of addressing modes. Allocation of memory for various uh, segments will have a bearing on code accessing those data segments. When I say data segments, it is data segment, heap and stack, right? Now, how does code access data in all segments? Mind you, the code has to be generated prior to the execution of the program. That means an instruction should have an address of the data segment or of the stack segment or of the heap segment, right? And the compiler has to generate this instruction. That means compiler has to know about this addresses prior to the program execution. Compiler will know about the address of the variables associated to the data segment because of its fixed nature, one-time allocation, so no problem. But the real challenge for the compiler is for the data which is getting allocated dynamically. That's a real challenge. We will see how the compiler addresses this challenge, right? Code accessing data in the data segment. This should be a straightforward. Uh, we will see how. Here is an example uh, where we have uh, three functions uh, and two global variables, and every function uh, will have an access to the global uh, variables, right? And uh, we will see. Uh, in animated view how a function accesses the uh, data in the data segment the allocation of uh, uh, memory for data segment with fixed address and this will not change right until the program is done with the execution allocated just prior to the start of the program and will stay live till the program finishes the execution f1 accesses uh, the data segment, F1 invokes F2, F2 accesses the data segment, F2 invokes F3, and it accesses the data segment. Again, when F3 unwinds, data segment is still there, F2 unwinds, data segment is still there, F1 unwinds, data segment is still there. That means the addresses are fixed. The compiler will know about these addresses and since it knows about the addresses, there is no problem in addressing, right? The data segment goes up once the program is done with the execution. Now the inference is global data will be addressed in absolute way. It is an absolute addressing or a direct addressing. Absolute addressing is nothing but the base address is zero right next code access data in the stack segment mind you the allocation of memory for every stack frame or for every uh, function specific symbols is dynamic the function specific data is fixed but the allocation is dynamic this is where a challenge uh, is posed to the compiler how it how it generates an address for the dynamically associated uh, symbols or the memory address dynamically associated to the local symbols right code accessing function specific data example one this is a straightforward example what we had uh, discussed earlier f1 invoking f2 f2 invoking f3 and f3 returning back right f1 when the invocation starts then f1 specific data is allocated f1 accesses the code 
and priority invocation of F2, F1 uh, stores the return address in its stack frame, invokes F2, F2 specific data is allocated, F2 access the F2 specific data, F2 return address is stored, F3 is invoked, F3 specific data is allocated, and F3 access the code. So for the brevity of space, we have not included the local variables. Please assume there is local variables in every function, right? And we unwind uh, the stack frames, right? Uh, mind you, in all the examples, we have unwinded the stack frame as well as the code, right? Uh, the code unwinding is just uh, to show you that the execution control is moved back to F2. In reality, only the data is unwinded. That means you can assume the data has been removed, but not the code. Code will always be there till the program completes its execution. F2 unwinds, the execution control is moved back and F1 is unwind, right? And F1 finishes the execution and program completes the execution. This specific example, if you can see the addresses were though allocated dynamically or memory though allocated dynamically, the addresses was fixed. Uh, you can also say that what is a big deal here? Uh, we can, the compiler still can have a absolute addressing here without any harm, right? Uh, this is not the right example uh, to judge uh, uh, on the addressing mechanism. We will see one more example. Example two, the same example what we have taken earlier. This is a code F1 invoking F2 comes back, invokes F3, F3 invokes again F2. This will be interesting. F1 code starts executing, allocates uh, memory for F1 specific data, invokes F2. Now F2 accesses the F2 specific data. Mark the address 5980 is the start address of F2 specific data, right? Assume again we have local variables in every function, right? Now F2 finishes its execution. Now the address was F980. Please remember this. Unwinds, unwinds F1 again in my invokes F3 and F3 specific data is allocated. Now the address of F3 specific data is also 5980, right? F3 now invokes F2. F2 specific data is 5960, right? When we say absolute addressing, the address cannot be changed throughout the program. Here we see the address of F2 specific data changes. Once it starts from 5980, next it starts from 5960, right? It violates the addressing mechanism. If it, if you really subscribe to direct addressing here, right? Hence, the compiler cannot go with direct addressing, right? Again, uh, we unwind, right? Now, what is the inference? Compiler, how does it generate an address using relative addressing? Right? It is relative addressing. Relative to, to what? Relative to the start of the stack frame or end of the stack frame. Hence, the stack frame size is fixed. Right? Compiler can generate an address, generate a relative address with respect to the stack frame, either start of the stack frame or end of the stack frame, right? How the system supports this, right? Compiler alone cannot do this. There should be a support from the system. How does the system support this? We will see in the next uh, session, right? Now, what is the conclusion? The conclusion with respect to the processor perspective, code, access, data, linear data, it accesses 
through absolute addressing. Short-lived data or the data in the stack segment accesses using relative addressing. See here, we have taken an example ESP. It's the end of the stack frame. More on this, we will be looking into the next session. Here, it is direct addressing. Write an address straight away. Right? Next, heap segment. We will be looking into this in more detail in the next section 1.6. Right? Question to ponder. In this session, we have been telling compiler generates an address. Compiler will know about the data segment address or compiler will know about the address of the variables associated to the data segment. How will the compiler know the memory address to access data from data segment? Memory is an execution time concern. Compiler is a build time concern. Right? How will the compiler know this? Please refer to series 2, Understanding C Program Execution Environment. Very, very important uh, series, uh, right? Um, you will get a clear understanding of uh, how these addresses are generated. Mind you, very important series. If you want to really analyze the program when it ends up in a problem, when you see a problem, or a bug in the program for a huge project, not for any toy assignments, 10 lines, 20 lines of code, 100, 1000 lines of code, 10,000 lines of code, 1 million lines of code. If you want to analyze when there is a problem, this series is very important, which will, ex which will uh, unleash uh, the, the details, the beauty behind uh, the C program, right? Uh, I wish you refer this uh, series, right? The next is the devil is in the details. We have just touched the tip of the iceberg, right? More details on who prepares the stack frame and how the processor supports in stack frame creation right and the entire dynamics of creating a stack frame and unwinding with more gory details with a beautiful animated view will be coming in the upcoming session right stay tuned if you have any questions or doubts or if you want to give some comments feedback feel free to do that in the same page of the video till we see you in the next session take care and bye bye